is the pen mightier than the keyboard? Yes, it's the pen and laptop study. Two independent groups. Here we are at the data two page and I'm looking at the pen laptop one data, the pen group and the laptop group. Incidentally, if you want to get rid of the ribbon up here, right click up here and collapse the ribbon, give us a bit more space. Also, we can uh, scroll over to the right and see all three pen laptop data sets there. Click on one of these buttons at the top to transfer the corresponding data set back to the left. Now, we have one group of 34 and the laptop group of 31. And here we have mean and 95% confidence interval for each of those separate groups. We can show the data points like so as stacked dot plots. And that display gives us great insight because we can see every individual data point, maybe a couple of outliers up here. And we also get the inferential information we want. What is the effect size? Our research question is, to what extent is the uh, laptop score greater than the pen score? So our effect size, most suitable for answering that question, is the difference between the laptop mean and the pen mean. We also want the confidence interval on that difference, but I can't see it in that picture. We need a different picture. Click here and there it is. So we have, as before, the two group means, but now we have a difference axis the units on that axis are spaced exactly the same as on the main axis, but zero is lined up with the pen mean so that we can read off the difference, the laptop minus pen difference here at about six on this scale, which is exactly corresponding to about 15 and about nine, a difference of about six. But the most important thing is that we can show the confidence interval on this difference. And this is what we need to interpret to uh, make sense of the data. This difference between the means and the confidence interval on that difference is what we need to answer our research question. The point and interval estimate we need, that's the best answer to our research question. So this figure is very revealing about the independent groups case. Over here, you can see I've clicked the radio button for yes, assume variance is equal. And the two standard deviations of about five and about seven are not too different. So that's probably a reasonable assumption. If I didn't want to make that assumption, I could click here and read the pop out about the Welch Satterthwaite approximation which bypasses, which doesn't require the equal variance assumption. And if you like, you can click between these two and see if there's very much change. Looking down here in the uh, values, there's a little bit of change, but not an enormous amount. So I'll stick with assuming homogeneity of variance. And here is our pooled standard deviation that we use to calculate the confidence interval on the difference and read the pop out there. It's pooled based on pooling of the two within group standard deviations up here, S1 and S2. Now, if we just have this common display, can we eyeball the difference? Yes, we can. It's the difference there between this mean and that mean. Can we eyeball the confidence interval on the difference? Well, in fact, we can, because this confidence interval on the difference is based on the pooled standard deviation, which itself is based on the standard deviations in the two groups. And so this confidence interval is derived from the same information that we use to calculate these two separate confidence intervals. And in fact, the confidence interval on this difference is always just a little longer than either of these two. Here it is just a little longer than the longer of those two. So if we just have the left-hand display, we can eyeball the difference, sure. And we can also eyeball, approximately, the confidence interval on the difference because it's going to be just a little longer than this confidence interval.
This applies only for independent groups, but it means that when we are given just this common display, we do have enough information to draw conclusions about the difference, because we can eyeball or sketch out this second display, which shows the difference we're really interested in, and approximately the confidence interval on the difference. And our task now is to interpret that in the context. And so you'll think about what does mean transcription of about 9% for pen and about 14.5% uh, for laptop and a difference of about 6%. So switching from pen to laptop means transcription goes up on average from about 9 to about 15. What does that mean? Well, that's a pretty substantial increase, isn't it? That 15% of people's notes are basically transcription when you're working at a keyboard. But of course, always bear in mind what's behind these summaries. And here we've got the data to remind us, well, some students had virtually no transcription. Others, particularly in the laptop case, were making about a third of their notes was transcription. So there's big variability, even though there's um, quite a reasonably large overall mean difference. I guess two main messages here. One is that with the independent groups, these diagrams, these figures, are really very revealing about what's going on. They show us the individual data points, they show us the mean and confidence interval for each separate group, and most importantly, this difference in its confidence interval on the difference axis gives us the information we need to make an insightful interpretation of this whole result. Having done our statistics, it's our judgment and discussion and critical thought about what this difference means and the amount of uncertainty we're left with on this difference that's the important thing.